Hey everybody, Bosch Lasso BK Forex. Welcome to the weekly technicals for October 2nd to October 6th, 2017. For the majors, for Euro dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar. And it's that time of the month again. It's the data carousel time, beginning of the month. All the key data points are going to be released this week. So there should be quite a lot of volatility in the majors, uh, in the pound especially, a little bit in the euro, and of course in the dollar, dollar yen, especially as the week uh, comes out to a close because we have the uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. The levels this week have changed a little bit, but not much, not really that dramatically. Euro still in this 18 to 2100 corridor, holding very much that 18 support, which remains a key pivotal support level for that pair. Dollar yen probed the 1300, kind of pulled back off of it. Um, realistically, you probably could say, um, I really think that support really is much more at 11, not at 10 at this point, and probably resistance if you really wanted to kind of scale it up, would be 14 to be more accurate. Um, pound, on the other hand, slid down significantly. It failed pretty badly at the 36 level, broke the 34s, and in fact, I think the pound could be ripe for relative weakness uh, trade as we open up next week, as economic data in UK begins to slow. So on the uh, calendar itself, next week, we have quite a lot. We have the UK PMI manufacturing, which we are bearish because of the sharp drop, drop in, uh, in CBI. And if that comes in bearish, it's very likely going to create a bearish expectation for the services, which is a much more important number. Now, I'm recording this on Friday, and as of Friday, UK came out with a weaker than expected Q2 GDP. More importantly, the index of services, which is sort of the component that measures the services part of the UK economy, which is 80% of UK GDP, actually slowed down materially in July. And that suggests to me that, that um, ironically enough, now that everybody's getting comfortable with the idea of Brexit, we're finally starting to see negative impact on the UK economy uh, wade its way through. And I think um, that might be the story into next week that could really weigh on cable as we go forward. So cable is an interesting story to the downside. Euro doesn't have a lot of uh, data set next week. We don't have the ECB meeting. We have just, you know, we have PPI data, we have uh, secondary releases of the uh, PMIs. All of this stuff was already uh, was already released on a preliminary basis. It actually came in pretty good, continues to show that, that the Euros, Eurozone economy is doing quite well. And really the big um, data point this week is all U.S. ISM manufacturing, ISM non-manufacturing, which is services on Wednesday, ADP employment, which is going to give us a peek into, uh, uh, into the data. And most importantly, and this is where it gets very interesting, we get the non-farm payrolls. And the thing that's fascinating about the non-farm payrolls this week, or this month rather, is that the market is looking for a sharply, sharply lower number. And this is very much due to the hurricanes. Um, so in some ways, this is not something that I think the uh, market is going to pay too much attention to unless it really mm -hmm. turns negative, unless we actually turn negative job growth. What will be much more important and much more significant for the dollar strength is the average hourly earnings. Now, we're looking for a bump here of 0.3%, which is significant. And I am highly dubious that we're going to print that number. That really is going to make or break dollar yen. And that's going to be the, the difference between whether dollar yen has a reasonable chance to go to 114 or whether we're going to drift back towards the 111. Because at this point, the market still remains highly skeptical the Fed is going to be able to pull the trigger on a 25 basis point hike in December. There is very little inflation. I sort of in just tweeted out today that, that the shorter view of the U.S. economy is the following. Growth, positive. Inflation, negative. Um, labor market, essentially modest. And final demand, very muted. So the Fed is kind of confused. And the critical thing that's really going to keep the Fed, I think, from uh, raising rates, or conversely, the one thing that will completely flip them over and definitely tilt them into a hawkish structure is if wages begin to rise because they won't even wait for inflation. They'll just be happy with the rise in income. We had personal income, personal spending today. Numbers were not great. So it'll be very interesting and very important. This is, in fact, going to be, I think, the single most important data point as the week progresses. So having taken a look at all of this, we can now take a look at the charts and just see how everything is setting up. Euro essentially holding bid at this 18 level, or 1750 level. And that's very impressive to me because uh, there's a lot of uh, turmoil in the Eurozone with the Merkel election being very much up in the air. We have the Catalonia 
uh, revolt eff effectively coming up this weekend. Um, and against that, though, the background the user on economy is actually quite good. So uh, with you know political turmoil but economic stability, the market seems to really want to buy the euro, irrespective of what's going on over there. Even though the ECB continues to say they're not ready just yet to taper QE, still the market is uh, clearly uh, bullish euros buying the pullbacks. And I think if you look at this on, uh, on a chart basis, effectively the euro is a buy to dip story until and unless it breaks that whole 17 and a half level. Um, really, or rather, you know, 17, I'm sorry, but it breaks the 17 level. That's really the, the key support level here uh, in the euro. It breaks it to the downside, then we have a major distributive top that occurred in August and September, and now we could be looking for a distribution all the way down to 114. As long as we hold above here, we're essentially higher lows, very bullish formation, maintaining the upward uh, trend in the euro, and a potential move back up towards 120, especially, and this is a critical thing, especially if the U.S. data just doesn't um, cut, cut uh, mustard, if the U.S. data just simply doesn't come up to uh, expectation. Uh, the pound, on the other hand, a much more distributed, much much more choppier top here at the 136. It had a massive, you know, euphoric rise, and now we're having a pretty serious correction. The hold here at 3,400 is pretty impressive, but if we get negative data, the critical thing to me is going to be the 3350 break, or rather the 33 break. If we, if we break below 33, that would create a much more uh, sharper V-shaped correction and puts us all the way down basically to a support level around 32. So UK data front of the week is going to be very critical uh, determining uh, cable strength or weakness. And if it comes in weak, uh, the market is going to start pricing in the possibility of even weaker. So sort of the irony of the whole thing is that just when... The, Bank of England is finally ready to, to raise rates. Uh, UK economy goes into the tank, and that in turn makes them hold off on any kind of rate hikes to go forward. Uh, so for now, cable looks pretty distributive. And finally, dollar yen uh, looks relatively supportive, but but again, here the levels are very much this 1150 level. That's the key support level. Of course, that's going to be very much driven by by the data coming up over the next couple of uh, days. The Business data, the corporate data continues to be strong, but it's really going to be the consumer. The market is going to want to be convinced. Um, it's it's all going to be based on on the idea whether U.S. yields can uh, appreciate. Uh, market can continue betting on the fact that the hike is going to be real. And a truly bullish move here would be a move through the 1350s, which would then open up the full run to, towards the 1400s. Right now, we're kind of stalling at a lower high, and that's not very bullish. Although the fact that we're holding above the 112 is kind of bullish. And I would say that until and unless we break this this level, uh, you sort of have to go with the yen to the upside uh, uh, and give it a benefit of the doubt. So that's how the week shapes up. It's all going to be dollar data. We'll see how, how it all shakes out at the end of the week. But for now, it's kind of a mild bullish tilt towards dollar yen, mild bullish tilt towards euro dollar, and a big question mark about whether the cable can really hold the gains at these levels. Wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Boris Lossberg, over and out.